because of Cucodia, I haven't saw this one. Oh yeah, I have no idea what the fuck that is. <sighs> the Costa Concordia. Ship of dreams. Oh, it's a boat? It's been eight years. Shit. I can still so smell the buffets from their five restaurants. The casino and three-story theater had hardly been used. Ah, the gym, the day spa, the sheets in her 1,500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. And you could tell. You could really tell. I remember it like it was just a few years ago. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. It was day two of our seven day journey. But that ship, I, she was cursed. Oh my God. When she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the side instead of smashing. A bad omen, but I'm not the superstitious type. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January, 2012. No way, just the Rian's 100th said... year anniversary of the Titanic. On a ship that's oh also my God. Only safety rated for two compartments. Wait, what body. happened? Especially not when you have a five-star max level captain like Francisco Scatino. A man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just what a is this, years. that music from Final Fantasy? He knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. For example, when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vernemont, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused <gasps> another collision. Wait, that, it I've was him twice in a row? So let's set the scene. It's a beautiful evening. How can you see that you don't navigate the ship? People are having fun on the slides, drinks After this. at the bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals <laughs> hate it, but the customers love it, and it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, comes into the dining hall with the lady, Dominica Samorton. Remember this face, because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Okay. Scatino eats his dinner with her and socializes for a little while. Then he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman. Jacob Russell Bin. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price. And he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. It's his first time steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. At least we oh think he God. is. He it's hard to tell spider. because he doesn't speak English or, or Italian very well at all. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Now, don't be confused by these numbers, they're just the degrees on a compass. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute. So he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. Oh my God. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the queue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Oh my God, Pulling I'm gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. 
But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Language barrier. Because at this point, the captain says, 325. But the helmsman relays, 315. So the first officer intervenes and he goes, no, 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 335, which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The oh helmsman confirms, 325. Oh, those Their poor communication have is the moving is at a much wider angle than they think they are. However, the captain should and would know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. But they're not doing that. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass. And then, the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly oh my in God. front of him in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters closer to the rocks than it should be. Without deviation, there is going to be a direct collision. Oh, shit! Scatino immediately commands the ship to start turning away. 335. Not enough. The captain shouts, 340. The captain yells, 350. Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, turning Oh no, it's going to turn. You're going straight. You want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the order of 350, Right now, the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the rock. And they cannot stop it, it's though, right? To get worse. You cannot stop a ship. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back 350 starboard, or we end up on the rocks. Oh my the god! The officer goes to assist the helmsman. Now, don't get confused by the orders from here. We're changing over to rudder instructions. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still, it's oh my God. hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Port 10, but the helmsman only gets to port five before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of port. Undoing oh my god! Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but it's too late. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on as the bow of the ship narrowly passes by the rocks. Hard to port. The second officer yells, we're gonna hit. Collision. Oh my God. I hope no one got killed. I mean, it's all character from the scene. <laughs> Downtown Nordtown. It's day 56 of playing Russian roulette. Seems I never win. Gonna drink all cool by yourself? Somebody has to. I hear you're a man who's good at finding folks. I'm many things. I'm looking for this fella. I got to find him. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts in thousands of servers in dozens of countries across the globe. And just like that, she was gone. The only thing she left <laughs> was a calling card. Okay, okay, I'm skipping, I'm skipping. Some story. Add? Uh, 
He's really good at editing and uh, doing a nice long montage with uh, storytelling. A 53 meter gash opens up in the hull and thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, the lady inside is trapped and terrified. There's confusion across the ship. All of the crew off shift come back on duty. All officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are now adrift. Close the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring Oh my in. god! So much so that within <laughs> 29 seconds of collision, all six <laughs> oh, engines shit. stop working through flooding. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, the water pumps too. Everything. The captain no the wonder hard uh, it takes him so much this time to read the new video. Look at the details he packed into it. That too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard. Plunged into absolute darkness. <gasps> A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly. Then six, more slowly, four shortly after. Then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. <gasps> These main generators give power. Oh to the my whole ship. god! From that's such a to mess. To hotel functions, pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless sinking cage. It must be so fucking terrifying. A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. Oh. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage, and it caused a huge panic in the theater as passengers are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for vests. Please return to your cabins. The emergency generator starts. All of the watertight doors close except for door 12, which is jammed. The captain calls Pilot, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? Yes! Oh there's my water. god! Go down. Let's go what down the other us. side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps. I'll let you know. It makes it in sound the theater, scary, too. The whole magic box apparatus slides right off the stage and falls into the crowd, further increasing panic. On the bridge, an announcement is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Announcements are made. The captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault, which is currently under control, we're currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation and we'll inform you of developments as they occur. Thank you for your attention. Oh my God. Coincidentally, at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing My Heart Will Go On and it's very much not helping the situation. Oh my God, the Ree? The calls the Costa Crisis Unit. Roberto Ferro. No way. He tells the Crisis Unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages and that they are also in a blackout. The crisis office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails? Anyway, around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because oh, you want yeah, the ship to end wave. up as close to shore as possible. Oh my god, and there's nothing to stop this. It senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. Dude, if so I, I see like the room being like this, Italy. I would just... The daughter then calls the police, and the police oh. call the harbour master. Oh, so did good. While that goes on, the conversation between Pilon and Ambrosio. Thank you very much for the, the diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact, thinking that the incoming water can be reduced? Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this oh, point they need to that leave the, ship the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. 
uh, actually two compartments have been flooded. But don't worry, the ship's stability isn't in danger. Wrong. Why? Why As would you lie? There's a lack of people in the ship. Initiative. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain oh. tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this blackout been going on? About 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? It, it's just a blackout. I, I gotta go. The harbour master is suspicious. He says to his superiors that he thinks something more is going on. He calls a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look at the ship. Another oh problem. my the what the fucking moron how did he got the, how did he become Pilon manually has to turn an the owner thing on of the ship. With a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire the captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like is it still flooded yes yes it is the captain is essentially in denial of the situation the harbor master calls again finally he says the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing he qualifies with no one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tow boat. When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three compartments flooded, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad and they are not going to improve. The coast yeah. guard brings every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, up with the passengers, the cruise director's assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges. No problem. Why she would you this say this? She said knowing it was wrong and that it further endangered life. Okay, I just want to say, I don't know if you ever heard about that story. Uh, I think it was uh, in South Korea where it was a ship uh, almost full with only students from a school for a school trip. And... Um, uh, I think the, the guy, you know, that, you know, was piloting the boat said to everyone to remain calm and stay, you know, in, in the room. And, and you know what happened? Everyone died. Every fucking kid died. It was just fucking bad. <gasps> and you know what? The, the guy that was owning the ship and, you know, uh, doing the direction, he left. He fucking left the ship. And I believe normally he actually like killed himself years later because he couldn't live with the guilt of what he have done. Or, like it's so it's so sad. Like if you can just you know it, it you can have a documentary on YouTube. It it's just fucking creepy because you can actually see all the footage and record of like all of this you know students from their phone that sent to their parents, and there's no survivors. Oh, it was just, I, I did, I never heard about this story and it was years ago. And I'm like, how in the world I never heard about this? And yeah, oh, it, and you know what's sad is just, you know, when, uh, when the parents found like, you know, uh, the bodies of their kids, oh, my, I just cry. I, 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 I watched the documentary for the first time and I fucking cried. Most passengers 250 have... high school age children died. Yeah. I'm not going to put this on stream because it's just way too sad but uh oh my god how can you like pilot something with so many life and not care about their safety and here this is the same thing and i'm like i, I hope nobody died because i'm afraid that this scenario pays all over again at this point they aren't listening to this nonsense and they're busy figuring out how to abandon ship bang, 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 i never bang, went bang, on bang, a cruise bang. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Hey, couple. Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, but after no response, he orders the engine room to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no, stay. Oh. So what do we do? General emergency? Yeah, so he did good to tell them like, you know, to fucking leave. He could, they could have died because of this fucking moron. The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandoned ship. Maybe being an engineer during this catastrophe is so dangerous. The situation is under control. Please remain calm. But at this time, proceed to your master station. They're located now inside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. 
the Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity. And there's and also people inside still. Is the that captain issues a general emergency ring out yet. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, with many of the lifeboats too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking oh people up God. and dropping them off. The patrol boats oh, this report to the Wait, harbour master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about it and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. What, what is from 2012? This so story or is the other one? The captain then says to bottom out the starboard anchor. So they drop oh, you're right, it's sort of like music! Too much chain, effectively <laughs> rendering them useless. How oh, is so base. The deputy mayor of Giglio, Mario Pellegrini, and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbour. They watch the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. He gives up and starts helping passengers. Scatino tells everyone to leave and take radios, but not before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christidis and Silvia Koronica leave with him. What the Dimitri fuck? And some more and both get what out it, of why does By it this change? Point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Melee reaches the helicopter base. The first helicopter, a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac for the hour-long flight south. Bozio is the last crew member left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. Oh, he he's, leaves he's to help fleeing? passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. And then, the ship's black box stops working. Apparently there were technical problems with it. That means, from here, things are going to get a little foggy in detail. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats oh return God. to pick them up. This is no, no joke. Oh my goodness. It was no, no joke anymore. Oh! Oh, it's sir! You're not allowed to make a film movie. I'm allowed, I'm allowed. Who say you are? A second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learned that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. DeFelco tells the captain to get the fuck back on board and the captain kind of acts confused and then effectively refuses so the captain makes it to shore okay wait i just i just have one question okay so the rule of like you know um how do you call it this guy he's like the ship owner i don't know how you call it like you know uh why is that that rule that you have to say in a boat i know it's like everywhere like uh it's a worldwide thing uh the captain have to stay on the on the boat uh until everyone escaped but why why is, where where does this rule come from hello mira hi so captain goes down with a ship because you're in charge it's a matter of honor well i mean be, oh captain is the last to leave oh, okay it's just because he's responsible Kevin is the last person to leave the ship. It's a law in many places. I think it's a worldwide thing. I think yeah, it's it's in South Korea. You know, it's it's in Asia. It is also uh, but well in France, and it is also in America. So uh, I would be really surprised if it's not everywhere. Wow, it's really it's it's a uh, it's a really crazy I think you know honor uh, to uh, to fulfill. I, I find it like you know pretty cool. I think it's a good code. <laughs>
From here, we only have mainstream know. news reports. And we're already halfway through, dude. This documentary is insane. I love it. So it's not going to be super accurate. But they say that Gilio's police chief then finds 110 survivors on the rocks. International code. I hope it is. And among them is the captain. It's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. Oh, and what happened if somebody doesn't own her this? You know, you leave like... It's a sheep. Imprisonment. Amend. Um, that's not amend. A while like later, a rescue a boat picks up the captain and takes him to the harbour. He speaks to the police. He then finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael Molina and cry to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes to the harbour master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. <laughs> Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30 second cab ride to the Bahamas hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a, a prison, dog. Yeah. He was cold and afraid. He only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> 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 But then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, Captain? Oh my God. We were the last to leave the ship. All day Saturday, rescue was searched for the ship. Wow. On Sunday morning, Such a fucking South coward, Korean couple was dude. found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through the crash and woke up unable to exit <gasps> their cabin. Oh my God. Manrico Giampandroni was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin service director. Oh no! In the end, 32 people died. The final body wasn't discovered until nearly three years later. No! A crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia was the largest cruise oh. ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's Fucking the ship. Fucking moron! This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. <laughs> Chat. God fucking damn it, guys. <laughs> oh, seven. Oh, I thought it was for the ship, it's for the people, right? I wouldn't use 07, I would just, you know, just cry him or just sad. Because, like, 07 is for a no no, you know? A soldier. They were, they were not soldiers, they were victims. Just sad. Yeah, for me, it's cry mode. Isn't the end. I wouldn't say 07, that's just so point. weird. What most people know is that the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead. And then the captain abandoned ship like a coward. <laughs> but there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. What, are you, what is there he doing? The deets. <laughs> what the fucking moron. Loot box time. The Costa Concordia. Yeah, I'm, am I so really blown away how he was still a captain after two huge big mistakes? It's not the first time. How? I swear. More than just a floating resort. There's a mall. A casino. Cha ching, cha ching. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared to sneak by authorities and try their luck in the hot zone. What? Within days, police divers reported that valuable items, once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. High-end electric, expensive oh furniture, diamond sets, cash from the casino, of course. cash registers, jewelry of course. and display cabinets, we were doing those Japanese seven for the people who died and the heroes agents. who died helping people. The ship is whatever lol. Yeah, no, I mean, I understood light. I understood after. But I, like, I don't know, or seven, I don't know. I don't think it's good. Like, for, I don't know. It's like for, I don't know. Century for that context, artists. I don't think it fits, but uh, I mean, it's you. As well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. <laughs> Who steals a big fuck off bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. 
a patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing and thieving and pinching. Later on, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Of course. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy <laughs> even made a listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. And although there were plenty of bidders, eBay pulled the plug. Of course, what, what did they expect? I'm just so dumb. Oh. I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we have to talk about someone else. The woman? Dominica Samorton. That was a close one. Okay, There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Tense media speculation reports that her presence distracted the captain. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although she did later admit to the media that she found him handsome. And how could you not? You so fucking precious. <laughs> when you <laughs> But she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe and they want to know I have something with him. It's more interesting. It's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Miss Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone, all right. And took several <laughs> interviews. But as the pressure mounted upon her, she began making ominous threats to Scatino, saying he must confess, and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? And what was that package? Oh? Drugs, apparently. Oh so my God! No the ship was running way. Narcotics for the mafia, and not without cause. A number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an aside, Scutino was tested for drugs immediately after the crash. He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched, and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Oh, right, a helicopter. Simulton commented on it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Okay, wait. So she expected to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? Wait, how did we get here? Oh, right, sex yeah. with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Simulton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. The jig was up, but they continued denying it. Sir Morton mostly faded from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge pressed her oh, to be truthful um... about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the truth or shut up. So finally, <laughs> she admitted it. She... Yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. What is up, Troubler? No, 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 no. She did. I'm his wife with C. Morton. Oh, I never God. watched him star, but she um, and Scatino had been how having is an this affair guy? for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's lover. Naturally, she gave another confusing interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today I Does die people the really try to die on the ship, you fucking bitch? I don't think it's like a right word to use find here. Out something that I try to hide. Subsequent to the trial, she used her fame in Moldova to become a political activist, often appearing on television and radio and in articles covering protests, accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. <laughs> She's complaining that uh, there aren't enough bin in the area. The police are <laughs> telling her to come down and point her that uh, there are pine right there. Wait, what the fuck? 
It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, girl power, yada yada yada. And interestingly, part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, sure. Other than that, I don't really know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her ins. Oh God! Oh again. God! <laughs> Several civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crociere, and their parent company, Carnival Cruises, immediately saw a share drop of 23%. Don't beat. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, and loved ones. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship was uh, taking uh, at the time, and, and was not only taking, but the time the, the ship Today, was... Junior. Claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route. But that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was against company rules. Also untrue, because investigators found that they didn't have any rules about deviating route, and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Oh, now, in response shit. to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's nothing. That's kind of small. 11,000 euros, about $14,000, is the minimum compensation under international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, understandably, were not too happy with this deal, and they mm. refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult. For what these poor passengers went through, we think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate. Here. Take it. Go ahead. Compensation being offered is not commensurate. Later, Costa Crociere would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crociere is now off the hook for all criminal liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto the faces of six staff members. Passengers and relatives of the dead are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. The offer is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. Cut By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. <coughs> Eventually, passengers mm -hmm. who refused the initial compensation of 11,000 joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. It's not they were awarded 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. Oh my god. New York attorney Peter René traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At René and René, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on the job, a seventh case cropped up via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. René, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. René agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd, but Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch. Still, Mr. Renai was suspicious. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, how much money do you think this is worth? Uh... This is a huge red flag, Petey. In 20 years of doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? 
So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi, it was the boyfriend again. Ah, uh, look, there's been a bit of a misunderstanding and the child isn't missing at all. Uh-huh. And then he claimed he was confused because he had done too many drugs the night before. Oh, okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police oh, with him. No. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Yeah, we went to the park today and we went on the swings. Oh no, the jig was up. So the mum walks into the room sheepishly. It's a miracle. And the story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Oh my uh, God. Old Petey, I'm beginning to think they weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mom, it's just a neighbor. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like there'll be no criminal punishment for the scam because Hungary, a former communist country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. Oh, oh, my oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a very bad idea. <laughs> Mario, would you teach me some Italian? <laughs> oh, of course. What? Means <laughs> get back on board for fuck's sake. No. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Gregorio De Felco. The naval officer who shouted at Scatino to Vada a bordo caso became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scatino to go down with the ship. And when the captain chickened out. Wait, well, I just want to know when you go down with the ship, do you stay until you float on the water? And then they get you and. Or you have to die. It's like you have. To, it's like you know a kiss. <laughs> you, your captain, you fuck this up. A kiss. Oh, you literally die. Oh my god. Stay until everyone else is up. But if not everyone is off and you cannot, like, you know, rescue them, you have to die. It's like wow, damn, dude. De Falco was there to admonish him. Shit. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. When the captain first reported just a blackout, De Falco didn't believe the story. They don't die, they keep you after. No, you go in jail. You go in jail for that. Several lives. His actions were applauded by most Italians who were tired of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding responsibility. Accordingly, shirts sporting Vada a bordo caso were being printed by the end of the week, others setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, the without warning, DeFelco was you're transferred to an admin oh, you don't actually die with in the sheep. Coast Guard. You just stay and... Hear what I said, you've been demoted. DeFelco said that he had been passed up for promotion, I'm that not he sure. had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. DeFelco was... Tres Furioso. No. And it was public speculation that it was owing to bad no, I hate between himself no. and Admiral Delano, his former boss. His status among the public overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, ah, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he must show more maturity See, and professionalism is awesome to now. advance his career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, DeFelco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for the board. What? He still serves there today. I'm the captain now. Oh my god, that's really old, this music now. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that this would not be a straightforward investigation. 
So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But goddammit, he must have some kind of charisma going on, because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her as well. You can't keep getting away with it! <laughs> Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. So, Scatino and five others are facing criminal charges. Uh. Straight away, everyone lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except <laughs> for Scatino's. <laughs> And the condition of everyone's reduced sentences are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He touched me. Ciro, Jacob, and Silvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good deal. Good deal. And that meant that Scatino was oh. now all on oh. his own. Oh. Ciro, the oh, first nice. officer, was the first to give his testimony. On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. That there was confusion <laughs> over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his testimony or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took <laughs> authorities 12 months to eventually track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. Uh -huh. He just scalped again. Oh my and God. he hasn't been found since. After that, Ferrarini gave his testimony. Then, so, uh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. But Shit. wait, there's still the appeals. What? The appeals trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? None. Surprise! Rejected. Oh, yeah. So Scatino's lawyers appealed again. Rejected. And the verdict on the final appeal? Scatino made multiple attempts to secure a plea deal, but was denied by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic affair. Oh, okay. I see what you did there. Scatino was not present. Wait. Like, with the list of things, you know, he, he got called out for... There's not drug thingy, because there was drug. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, he was finally in a cell. Oh, oh, that hurt. oh so it haven't been found, okay. The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the underwater platform. The sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up to allow the ocean to fill them. The ship could then roll over properly. By late yeah. 2013, the ship was upright once more. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk some, uh, around crazy safely. Fucking work By July to do. 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. <laughs> it was and she was ready to yard. cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey then to the docks do where this? a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. Oh my god. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. He appeared on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. What would you pose with someone like him? Anyway, 
So these are the things that I remember from the Cost of God Gold. God damn, it was such a good documentary. He's that good at storytelling and doing the montage. Legend I know. of the Sea. And as for you, little fella. Well, it's time to return to you. From whence you came. Six quick things. One, NordVPN, good product. Check them out. Number two. Okay, is there something else I need to watch? I don't remember if 